Okay, so in this video, I want to demonstrate how we go about testing a simple application. It's a bit more complicated than our calculator example though, as there are a few more dependencies and it's probably looking closer to, to a real application that you, you may be working on. So we're going to be testing a user service, which is something that may form part of an application. The idea is it's something that allows you to register users, look up users by name, and it will probably have a whole host of other features too, but for the purposes of this test demonstration we're going to keep it simple. So we've got our user service interface you can see here, and it allows us to do three things. It allows us to find out what users we have on the system, it allows us to register a new user, and it allows us to find a user by name. Okay. And their implementation of our user service has a few dependencies, as we'll see in a second. So let's look at our implementation of this interface now. You can see we've just got a simple user service class. So firstly, let's look at how our implementation of this interface works, how our simple user service works. And then we'll look at how we go about testing this implementation. So let's look at the implementations of our interface. Users is pretty straightforward. It calls find all on some user store. Now our user store here, in reality, in a real application, would probably be a database of some form. We're not actually providing implementation of this here. Our user store class is just an interface. If we take a look at what this looks like. So our user store interface has two methods on it. It allows us to store a user and it allows us to get a list of all users back. Again, if this was sitting behind a real database, we'd have a number of operations on here. We might want to find a user by some kind of status flag or by other properties anyway. We probably also want the facility to remove users, etc. Okay, so our users implementation just uses the user store to find all users. Pretty straightforward, no logic there. Our register method is a, a little bit more complex. There's some logic in here that we want to test. And what this does, it says if we already have a username, we do something with an audit log, we add a log entry to say that that user is duplicate. We've already got a user with that username, so they can't be registered. If we don't already have a user by that name, then we insert an entry into our audit log saying we're registering a user with that name. What we also do is we use our user store again to create a new user, and this is a user with the username that's passed in. And it uses a time source here to request the current time. So what we're doing is we're storing the time that, that user was created in our system. If we look at what time source is, Time source is an interface, and all it does is provide us with the current time. Now, we could just make a, a static call or hard code our call to find out what the current time is, but we want to be putting it behind an interface so that we can separate ourselves and isolate ourselves from, from that dependency at test time. If we're actually going back and querying the real system clock time, then this will be very difficult to test. So coming on to our find implementation now. We're using a user store again to find all of our users. We're iterating over that user's list. And if we find a user with a matching username, we return that user. The user class here is just a simple class really you just uses a, a data structure to allow us to pass back the username and the creation time. Again, if this was a, a real application, you'd probably have a lot more information here and a lot more behavior too. Okay, and the only other thing we have is this private has user, which allows us to see whether we've already got a user by that name or not in our system. Okay, so we've seen our user store, we've seen our time source. 
Let's just have a look at this audit log. Our audit log again is an interface. This allows us to isolate the user service class from a real audit log implementation, which again is going to be really useful for testing. So what we're doing with our audit log, it's got a single method on it, which allows us to log with a, a log type, a subtype, and some data that we want to log. So this would probably be stored on disk somewhere, maybe in a database, maybe some event log. But basically, it represents the concept of information that you'd want to be recorded and persisted somehow. You know, a simple user service doesn't need to know how that's done. The user service just needs to be able to create these audit log entries in our register method as we saw here. And again, if there was more behavior in this user service, we'd probably have a whole bunch of other audit logs too. Okay, so we've seen the dependencies of our simple user service. We can see it uses the audit log, user store, and time source interfaces. And the way the simple user service works is it receives the implementations of these interfaces as constructor parameters. So a couple of ways you, you commonly see this done, either as constructor parameters, or sometimes there will be setter methods that allow you to set these dependencies. Now, I prefer the constructor method myself because I think classes should be created in a usable state. And it doesn't give you the option of changing those dependencies over time, which typically isn't something that you'd actually want to happen. So a simple user service constructed with its dependencies will function exactly as it should. Now, for this test example, I've not provided any real implementations of these interfaces. So you'd probably have an audit log, as we said, that maybe logged a disk or a database. The user store would, would go to a database, etc. But I've not provided those implementations here because we're we're just providing this as an example of how to test this user service class. Okay, so we've seen our implementation, we've seen our interfaces, our dependencies that the user service has. So let's look at our test code now. We've actually got two test classes. We've got test empty user service and test user service with a single user. We'll start with a, a simple one first. We'll start with test empty user service. So this is all about testing a user service that's created in its default state. It has no users registered on it at the moment. So we've got three test methods. We've got testing a default user service has no users. So user service at users dot size should return zero. We've got a test looking for a user that hasn't been registered yet. We want to make sure that returns null. And we've got a test that will look in a second for registering a single user. Firstly, let's look at the test setup. So a test setup is giving us everything we need to construct a user service that we want to test. Notice here we're only storing the user service as a reference to the interface, not to the simple user service class itself. We're only actually testing the public methods here. We're testing the methods that are on that interface so if we wanted to, we could create any type of user service here, as long as it implemented that interface, and we'd expect all of our tests here to pass. So as we said before, we're constructing it with all of the dependencies that simple user service class needs. Now, we've been talking about test doubles, so let's look at these dependencies that we have here and see what kind of test doubles we've got going on here. So firstly, the audit log you can see us constructing here, we call it a mock audit log, as it's a mock object. So implements the audit log interface, so it has the log implementation here. And we said this is a mock object, a mock test double, so it's about performing behavior verification. Okay. So what we have, we have a flag to say whether assertions are enabled or not. And if they are enabled, we want to make sure that this log method, when called, is called with the arguments that we expected. And we also have a, a private field in the class to say whether the log method was called at all. We have an expect method down here, which is public, which our test code will use to set the expectations up before running our test. 
So we'll say what log type, what subtype, and what data we expect log to be called with. This corresponds to the assertions that we just saw at the top there. We've also got a verify method. What this does, it allows us to assert that the log method was called. So we'll get assertions failing if our log method's called with the wrong parameters. But we also want to test failure if log was never called. So that's what this verify method is here for. You quite commonly see this with, with mocks and with mock frameworks as well. OK, so we've got a, a mock audit log. What else do we have here? So we have a, a fake user store. Now this implements our user store interface, as you might expect, and it's a fake object, as the name implies. So if you remember, fake objects are simplified versions of real implementations, but they behave as a real implementation would. So in practice, the user store will probably be backed by a database of some form. But in this case, we're just storing all of our users as a list in memory. So it's a, a very, very simple in-memory database of some form. Again, if user store had more behaviour, you'd expect to see all of that behaviour replicated here in a simpler way. So maybe you have a, a find by name, find active users, etc. And they'd all be implemented here against that array list. So that's our user store. There are no assertions in here. As we said, it's just a replacement simple implementation of our data store. So to our third test dependency, the time source. And this is a stub time source, so obviously a, a stub test double. So stubs differ from mocks. They may be used to perform state-based verification. We're not seeing that here because our time source is so simple. All it's doing is providing the system with the current time. So we're just using our stub here to return a, a known value to that system. So every time the current time is asked for, it will return the 25th of December um, 2011. It returns a fixed time every time. So we can use this stubbed information in our test code to make sure that the user service is behaving exactly as it should be. So, going back to our test, let's look at how we interact with these test doubles. So as you said, we've got our user service created with those test dependencies. We're calling enable on our mock audit log, so that whenever the log method is called, it will now make assertions. So, going on to test registering the single user test, the very first thing we've got to do is to set the expectations on our mock objects. So, we've got one mock object here, which is our audit log. So, we're telling our mock audit log to expect log to be called with log type of user, subtype of register, and data of Bob. Then asking the user service to register Bob, so this is executing our code that we want to be testing and verifying now. We get our user list back, and now we come to make our assertion. So we make sure that there's one user in that user's list, and that user's name is Bob. Okay. So here we're testing the user service is interacting with our user store correctly. This next assertion here is testing that the user's creation time is the same value as the stub time source current time. So we know that our time source stub is always going to give us the same value back. So we want to make sure that our user service is interacting with that time source and creating our user correctly, creating our user with the creation time that that time source provided it with. And finally, we're asking the mock audit log to verify. So if you remember, this will assert that the log method was called. So we know it asserts if log was called with the wrong parameters. So this just verifies that the log method was called. So between the expects and the verify, we know that the user service is interacting with our audit log as we expect for this scenario, for this test. OK, so you've seen how we interact with those three different types of test doubles here. Let's go on to look at our second test class.
test user service with single user. So this is all about testing a user service that's already had a user registered. So again, let's look at what we've got here. We've got the same fields as we had in our, our previous test. So we've got our user service we want to be testing, and we've got our test dependencies here. We're using the same test dependencies here, so we're using a mock audit log, as we were before, using our fake user store, and using our time source stub. Now, you may find some tests actually have slightly different test dependencies, but it really depends on the behavior you're trying to verify. So just because you have a, a mock or a stub in one test doesn't mean that you'll have the same object as a mock or a stub in another test. So creating our test dependencies here as before and constructing our simple user service with those dependencies. What we're doing now is we're registering the user Bob. As we said, this test class is all about testing what happens when we've already got a user registered. So we register that user now before we enable assertions on our mock audit log. We know that registering a user will create a log entry, but we don't want to be verifying it in this test. We've already verified that in our previous test. So we're enabling after registering that user so that we can use our mock audit log to make assertions about audit logs that we do care about, as you'll see in a second. So now we've got a user on our system, we can test finding a user by name, which we do here. So using user service find, we make sure the user is not null, and that the user has Bob as the username. So here we're testing that the logic in user service is correct, and that it interacts with our user store in the correct way. Test registering a duplicate user, as you might expect, attempts to register Bob a second time. So same pattern as before, we're setting our expectations on our mock, a mock audit log in this case, so we're saying this time, expect a log type of user, subtype of duplicate register, with the data of Bob. So we now execute the method we want to be testing, register Bob. And we're making sure that it still gives us one user back. That user is Bob, and as before, Bob was created with that creation time that the time source stub provided it with. So we're testing here that the, the simple user service behaves correctly and doesn't attempt to register an additional user or doesn't modify that data in any way when we register a user we've already got. And again, at the end, we're doing the verify on our mock to make sure that log was called, in addition to verifying that it was called with the right arguments. Okay, and our final test, test registering a second user. This is about creating a different user, as you might expect from the name. So we're creating a user called Alice here. So same pattern as before, on our mock, set our expectations, invoke the code we want to be testing, and this time we're just asserting that we've not got two users in our system. So again, we're making sure our simple user service has performed the registration against our simple user store. And here we're testing that the user store is giving us the right information, so making sure it gives us the Alice user back this time. And again, verifies that creation time there. And then finishes by doing the verify in the mock as we saw before. Okay, so that's quite a quick tour of a test for our user service. Again, user service is pretty simple, but I hope this demonstrates how you can inject your dependencies into the object that you want to be testing. So we saw here we're using what's commonly referred to as constructor injection. We quite commonly see this referred to in dependency injection frameworks like Spring Framework, for instance. And we're using this so when our user service is created, it's created in a state that's ready to use. It's functional at this point in time. And all of the dependencies that the user service needs are represented by interfaces so that we can have real application implementations, which we haven't actually got here, and test implementations of those interfaces too. And this allows us to replace those real implementations with test doubles with the mocks, stubs, and fakes, as we saw. And we've also seen here how we can use different types of test doubles in different ways. 
So we saw how our fake just provides a simple store representing a database for our users. We saw how we can use a stub to return a known value to our test each time, to the system that we're testing each time. And we saw how we can use a mock object to perform behavior-based verification. Okay, so that's it for this walkthrough. And maybe as an exercise you want to try extending this user service to implement more functionality, then you'll find the, the zip file attached to this lecture, the source code. So in the next section, we'll look at mock frameworks. Quite commonly when you talk about mock objects, you'll see a number of mocking frameworks come up. So we'll look at what those are in the next section.